Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum viewers and welcome to my channel and in today's video we are going to discuss the transformation of our beta function. Okay, so because in the previous video, uh, previous two videos related to the beta function, we discussed uh, the relationship between beta and gamma function and after that we discussed one of the major property of the beta function and we uh, try to uh, we just tried to understand that property with respect to its proof now today in this video we are going to discuss the major transformation of this beta function which is this okay we know that the beta function of your l and m which are two uh, positive real values the beta function of these two positive real values is uh, defined by means of this integral a definite integral having these limits and that's why you call this integral as the beta integral with with reference to this beta function so this integral is equal to the to this integral i mean this this integrand can be transformed into this integrand and the limits can be converted from uh, uh, into zero to infinity from zero to one so how this thing is possible how this transformation can be can be brought about so in this video we are going to understand the this aspect so let's start and let's try to figure out this transformation more deeply okay so let's begin okay remember that uh, the very first real positive real value which is written in the beta function once when you subtract one from it that value is going to behave with the power on the base x and once when you subtract one from the second real value present in the beta function that is going to behave as an exponent on the base 1 minus x so you should keep this thing in mind all right now what you have to do over here we are going to apply the major substitution uh, that we do in the integration so uh, let us assume that let your x is equal to 1 upon 1 plus y okay this is something that we have to suppose here <coughs> okay now at the place of your x your, you can substitute this value now you need something to put down at the place of your um, 1 minus x so you can simply substitute the value of your x over here 1 upon 1 plus y and then you can take out the LCM you're going to get some answer also you can do the working right over here and then once when you apply the integration you simply put down that value at this place so it is your choice how you are handling this thing so you see I'm going to if I just uh, subtract 1 I, if I subtract both these values from 1 over here like this okay so it is going to give me the answer once when you take out the LCM this y upon 1 plus y so at the place of your 1 minus x you can put down this value or while doing while managing the integrand you can simply put down the value of your x which is 1 upon 1 plus y over here and then you take out the lcm at this place and you are getting this answer so it is your choice how you're doing it okay uh, either in a manual way or in a separate form it is your choice now i have to get some value for my d of x as well so what i do i'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to my x before doing this for my convenience how about if i do like this I can do it like this okay now I'm going to differentiate both sides with respect to my x my original variable okay so this is going to give me one all right and over here I'm going to apply the formula of my x n which is going x power n is going to be my n and this is behaving as my x n minus 1 all right and then I'm going to apply a chain rule here like this <coughs> so it is going to be minus 1 plus y power minus 2 
and you see this of differential operator is going to apply going to be applied on one as well as on the y so if i just do it in a proper way just to make people understand it's going to be like this okay and you know that the derivative of a constant number comes out to be zero so this thing will become zero and you are having simply this thing left okay so it is going to be 1 upon 1 plus y power minus 2 dy by dx all right and over here you're having 1 so this dx will move over here and now you're having and this in order to bring out this power positive I'm going to shift it in the denominator okay and that's your dy so at the place of your dx you're going to put down this thing now let us handle us and uh, let us handle uh, the limits of this integral as well so let us handle the limits so if so if your x is zero here then what is going to be the value of your y okay what is going to be the lower limit in case of your y variable so you see if your x is zero here okay let us do the work then y is going to be what okay then y is going to be what uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry y is going to be what that's why that's what we do not know okay so let us put down the value zero over here in the definition of your substitution it's going to be zero is equals to i'm just doing the working here for your convenience okay so so if i shift this thing at this place and zero is shifted over here in the denominator at the place of your one plus y then it is going to be one upon zero so this thing shows that one plus y is equal to some infinity equal to infinity that is that that is your y is infinity okay if you sh if you just move your one over here then obviously your infinity is unaffected it is infinity so if your x is zero then your y is going to be therefore infinity all right so at this uh, at the, the lower limit uh, at the place of your zero you're going to put down infinity once when you start using the variable y in the in the integrand okay now move ahead to the upper limit how we are going to transform this limit if your x is equal to 1 then what will be your value of your y okay what will be the value of your y so the use the same definition here that we have just not the definition it's a supposition okay so it is x is 1 1 plus y okay so if we just cross multiplication it is this all right so this thing tells us that it is going to be this so that's why this thing tells that y is zero so y is your zero so at a, when if x is your one then y is giving you zero answer so at the place of your one you're going to put down your zero all right so now you see we have just defined the limits all right we have just maintained the value of our x in terms of y the value of 1 minus x in terms of y the value of dx in terms of your dy we have just obtained all those things and now we are going to put down in this uh, beta integral all those values all right so let's do this thing okay so at the place of your limit zero in terms of x the limit of the lower limit of your y is infinity all right so we just put down this infinity and in case of your upper limit we have just done that that if your x is 1 then in that case your y is 0 the upper limit is 0 here okay at the place of your x you're going to put down this value all right it's going to be 1 upon 1 plus y l minus 1 all right at the place of your 1 minus x, at the place of your 1 minus x, you're going to put down this value, all right? <coughs> y upon 1 plus y, all right? m minus 1. At the place of your dx, you're going to put down this value. 
minus. So it is minus 1 upon 1 plus y whole square dy. Okay, that's it. Now you can notice here that the lower limit is positive infinity, the upper limit is zero. That doesn't make any sense. Means upper limit value should be greater than that of the lower limit. Okay, so you have to, this is the contradiction uh, uh, regarding the arrangement of the limits here on the, in the integral. So you have to reverse, you have to reverse the position or, of your, of your uh, limits. So once when you reverse the limits, you're going to put down negative value, a negative sign over here. And this is the property of your integral. And it says that if you are having some limits here, and once when you swap these limits, you just write a negative sign, and then you swap the limits, keeping the integrand as it is. Okay, so this property we are going to follow here. Okay, you just do you just use this property only in case if you are having unnatural uh, uh, integral limits. This is totally unnatural adjustment. So let us bring it the let us bring in a proper sensible form. Okay, and uh, let us apply the the limit and the the powers over here on these terms uh, along with this uh, work. So you see, uh, this l minus one is going to be applied on the numerator as well as in this on this whole denominator. So no matter what power you put on the base one, always you get the answer one. You just write one as it is. Okay, and this one minus y, you just put down the the value of your power. And then this power is going to be applied not only on the numerator but also on the denominator. So we just applied the powers individually both on the numerator and the denominator. Okay. And this is going to be copied as it is. That's it. So this negative sign and this negative sign will turn the entire system into positive. Uh, okay. So that's it. Now, in the numerator, you're having simply 1, 1, and y power m minus 1. So, on multiplication, you simply get y power m minus 1 over here. Okay. And in the denominator, you're having same base. So, it's, you simply, and they're, they're all getting multiplied. So, you simply add up the powers. You simply add up the powers. So, l minus 1 plus, you just keep it in a bracket m minus 1 plus 2 dy okay that's it <coughs> excuse me so now let's let us see what what power finally we are getting in the denominator going to be l minus 1 plus m minus 1 plus 2 okay so this give you minus 2 and minus 2 will get cancelled from the plus 2 you're having simply l plus m in the power so so that's what we are having here Okay, dy. All right, this is it. This is something that we are having in the beta function, having these values written in this way, in this order. Okay, that's it. Now, in in the question, while well, well uh, in the starting of the video, uh, if you notice. We were having a form, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the form that in, in which we have to transform our beta integral. It was having this type. Basically, it was having this type. I mean, we were having power L minus 1 in the numerator and the power on, in the denominator was M plus L. Okay, so that's what we were having. So, and instead, over here, we are having 
some different arrangement of power. In the numerator, we are having m minus 1 instead of uh, uh, l minus 1. And the power in the denominator is l plus m instead of m plus l. So what to do? So over here, we are going to take the reference of the property that we proved in the previous video. You can see over there that the beta function of Lm real numbers is similar or equal to that of your beta function having m and l numbers. Okay, so once these two integrals are same, so how about if I write this integral with respect to this form? Okay, so as your beta Lm is equals to beta ml, so my beta Lm is similar to beta ml. So I'm going to write this integral with respect to beta ml, okay? So you can see here that whatever the first value you're having in the beta function, that first value is written over here. And the second value that you are having in the beta function was written over here in the numerator and over here in the denominator. So if I'm using this format, then my integral is going to be, my integrand is going to be written like this. The second, the, the second value is going to be written like this. And the first value is going to be written, it is going to be adjusted like this. All right. Now it is exactly giving me this type. Okay. So, <coughs> dy. So if I just replace this variable y with respect to variable x, there is no harm in it. So integral calculus allows you to <coughs> interpret, <coughs> excuse me, integrate uh, uh, what I was saying. The integral calculus allows you to replace the integrand variable with some other variable so i've just done that i've just replaced my y with respect to my x <coughs> maintaining the powers okay so the beta function of ln has been proven to this type to, uh, to this type which was initially expressed with uh, with the in this form so you see this this integral is transformed in this form this was a proper integral a definite one because you can see that the limits are very much well defined and over here the upper limit is undefined so you see beta integral a beta integral can not only be expressed in a definite integral form but also it can be expressed as in an improper integral form like how you were having in gamma integral. Uh, so that's that's all. That's what uh, that's what the major uh, objective of this video, and we have just accomplished that. This was the transformation of your beta function, how it is transformed from definite to indefinite form. Okay, so that's all done. And uh, in the next video, inshallah, we are going to discuss few examples related to the beta integral. So stay tuned. And if you find this video helpful and if you feel that the transformation concept is, some, is somewhat clear in your mind uh, and this video has played some role, so please subscribe my channel and like my video and share it with your friends and other, and other people so that uh, they're also going to be helped. And... That's all for today. I'll see you next time with examples of your beta integral. Take good care of yourself and Allah Hafiz.